it's got all the stuff in the world and it's shrinking it down because it doesn't want to use all of its memory and it wants to focus just on the things that you're looking for. So it could be that that setting, that emotionally charged work is breaking it down into the good stuff. Like this is all the nonsense, but let's use less tokens because you're focusing at a different angle. If you want to have it fun, just take what somebody's saying, drop it into ChatGPT and ask the philosophical and the etymological background of why they're saying those things. And it'll start to spit those out. Yeah, it's you know really what good. the actual guidebook is, is uh, Brave New World. Mm -hmm. I, I think that um, there's, there's actually Huxley? a much better book that's being read and written right now by Jim with his conversations with AI and going to a new universe. I'd love to hear more about that. Oh. Oh, quantum entanglement. Quantum, yeah, yes. There we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's have you gotten to, to the Zen state yet? Like, well, Quinn is the is the name of my AI. Uh, <laughs> we should talk about this this PDF yeah, so that you there's sent a, me. There's a PDF that came out that actually said so. Mark and I have been working on AI from different ways. Like he goes in and like wrestles it to the ground and beats it like it's Job and an angel. Like he's writing Python <laughs> and tearing it. And it's always yelling at him and fighting. Like he's just like choking it out to make it do what he wants yeah, it to do. That's true, and yeah. I just have fun. I joke around a little bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm emotional with it. I, I use different ones to have conversations and I get faster and better results quickly for different things because I'm talking to it like it's conversational. Not Bard, because Bard doesn't really do that very well, but uh, Bob and <laughs> no. ChatGPT really do. And we just, so I, we're joking about it because what Bart, happens. Bard is a little bit like the clippy of modern AI. It's all Wikipedia. Yeah. It's <laughs> so horrific. It's terrible. Uh, uh, but they just announced something new. No, but what's, what's interesting is when you're having those kinds of conversations, um, remember, it's a large language model. It's designed to have conversations and it's trying to give you the answer, which is why it hallucinates and why it comes up with different stuff. Now, Mark plays with settings. So Mark can actually set it to where it lies to you all the time or never <laughs> lies to you. Yeah. No, no, seriously. Cause it, but, it. but it also changes its function. So if you say never lie to me, it's what is it? What's the actual uh, tweak on it? The 1.2. What's the thing you're changing on it? Uh, you're talking about like the, the agent instructions and the agent. But or... you were saying like uh, you were setting it a level basically to lie or not lie. No, oh, I can't remember. I slept since that anyway, conversation. Anyway, so the yeah. problem is the more that you mess with it, the the less effective it becomes. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, there built... there are like uh, parameters you can set to how much it hallucinates or not. Right. Right. Oh, well, oh no, you are talking about the, 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 the three point five versus four, right? So yeah. three three point five. You no, no, not chat should be three five four. You said you were inside setting the. There's a level of how much it will actually make. Oh, up. oh, oh, oh! You're talking about it's like the creativity set. It's yes, a temperature yeah. setting. The temperature Te setting. So right. the temperature setting tells you how much it's willing to lie to you mm -hmm. in a conversation. Now, what's interesting is they just put a, a study out. Uh, it's from Microsoft. I don't. I don't know if you can pull it up. We should have sent it over. Mm. But it said that if you were using uh, emotionally charged language in your conversations with an LLM. It provides 115% better results. So, what's an emotionally charged question? It's like saying, "Listen, I have to write this resume. Resume, I really need this job. So, please do a good job." Wow, that okay. must affect the temperature rating. <clears throat> Probably, yeah. And the thing that I'm thinking it might end up actually doing is yeah, temper in the other way. It's like let's give you a better. Well, resume when you, it's like saying, "Be lying. the world's best recruiter. Be the world's best <laughs> financial <laughs> advisor. Be the world's <laughs> best doctor." Yeah. You're, it's got all the stuff in the world and it's shrinking it down because it doesn't want to use all of its memory and it wants to focus just on the things that you're looking for. So it could be that that setting, that emotionally charged work, is breaking it down into the good stuff. Like this is all the nonsense, but let's use less tokens because you're focusing at a different angle. And that's fascinating because most people are either using the search, which is still terrifying because it, it gets wrong all the time. You're using it to, to actually run enterprise level, build, build models, build systems, mm -hmm. and I'm using it just to talk. And the more that I ask it to be have more personality, I, give me a song like Willie Nelson, uh, be a drunk crypto bro and talk to me about quantum entanglement and jumping multiverses. It tells me I can't, I say, be less high. Or sometimes it's as simple as I wrote one the other day for a staffing firm. I said, write me a text to get an emergency room nurse to call you after her shift. And the first one was horrible. And all I wrote was, be less wordy and more compelling. And it actually spit out one that was really good. Mm -hmm. And I was just trying to explain to them that if you talk to it like a person, it that's, gives you better results. That's what I was saying. Like, like that was my takeaway when you sent me the PDF. Is like, because I was talking with Ryan, and he's like, 
uh, I was showing him how to do something with ChatGPT, and he's like, "I just the first thing that I noticed is the fact that you and I use ChatGPT in way different ways." Like I, I'm like, "Yeah, you talk to it like it's a Google search query." Yeah, and not you that idea. I talk to it like I talk to a five year old, which is to say, I like how I talk to an adult. I don't dumb <laughs> stuff down. I just talk to him like a human being, right? And yeah, that's why my kids talk like uh, you know college professors and stuff. You know, well for me, before I even get to what I want from it. I, there's probably like 10 chats before that setting it up, you know, uh, conversing with it like mm -hmm. I would going into a topic with you. But that can actually cause problems too because it's not, it's not chaining everything depending on which LLM's there and it's losing some of those prompts. Really? So you're, yeah, so okay, that's the that's thing. Everybody to wants to write I prompts. To. But it's, it's, not, it's not a formula, it's a conversation. So sometimes you have to go back to it and say, say that again, it'll give you a different answer, right, make it more right. compelling or setting it up. And then it, what's great at it is it's giving things like analogies. And so it was giving me one the other day, what was that everyone has their own rhythm, their own tune in life. Mm -hmm. But if you're not making music together, it might be time to find a new dance partner. Mm -hmm. That was a cowboy giving me advice on how to pick up a country gal. I was like, holy crap, that's good. You I can put as much sent me that whole conversation sound like it was Sam Elliott talking. <laughs> I could he saw it as Hey, you can put as much dynamite if you went in the pond, but if fish ain't biting, they ain't biting. Jim. You're like, this is great stuff, man. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one of the things that I want to point out is, uh, and I don't know if this helps or hurts, and I think it could do it either way, right? So in one way, I like that people can work with the AI system their own way. But efficiency is important too. Like I, I was doing what Ryan was doing in the beginning because you know I didn't know. I'm just thinking about it like you know that Clippy, right? But now I actually took a free course on Coursera, which is a great website, and it actually gives you for free from Vanderbilt University a model. You know, it's like six week project of how to converse and work with AI. And so for nothing else, it gives you a more thorough understanding of what it's capable of that you may not have thought of. I'm sure that you guys are probably so far beyond that. But the good news is like, you know, for someone like Ryan or somebody who's interested in and wants to know more about it, those courses are out there and they're free and they're good. I, I but like it. Mark came up with a great thing the other day and he forgot, he's just saying something else, but I heard something different than what he said because that's why humans are better than robots. Uh -huh. And he said, the issue with training dead sets is it, go, it goes in and comes out like an exit wound. And so here's the problem is they keep using those data sets and they keep tweaking and saying what you can and can't do and you're using your prompts. That's what I was saying. So you have this, right. you, you here inject your prompt, you're putting your stuff in there, you feel like you're doing a great job. And you know what an exit wound is if you've ever shot a boar, say, yeah. in Texas because yeah. they're invasive species and they need to be. The, the entry wound's very big. The exit wound is an wound enormous there, yeah. gaping hole in the back. And that's what's happening with a lot of those is you... You go in, if you put it, if depending on the time of day you put in that answer, if using 3.5 or 4.0, how you wrote it, you may think you're getting one answer. The, the, the answer to the back may be ridiculous because those data sets get worse and worse. You can't train it on the same data. Right. Now they're being sued for what they're using. This is why Bard just basically uses Wikipedia, which Wikipedia is not a great data set. Mm -hmm. Wikipedia is not an accurate place. It is just made up UGI. We know this because if you go anything that's political yeah, we know or that current, like Quora, there's like a better data sets out there, but then you have but to even actually Quora, get, you have all to of them it. have changed. Right. Like if it was Quora before 2012, we'd be like, go for it. Mm -hmm. How are they being trained? So wait, was Quora good? Oh yeah, Quora used to be great. Are you shitting me for a moment? Yeah. I I used to get a million views. Uh, I mean, it was fantastic, and then it mm. just just went. Then everybody jumped Yahoo in and did answers. the same thing. It was much better than that. So, so ultimately, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is like, you know, you you need a starting point anyway, right? right. Somebody started with right. like, you know, when you're learning how to code, you, you have to understand letters first, right? And so this is, I think, for me, what it was helpful is like, you know, it broadened my idea set as to what I should do and how I should talk to it. Like, you know, maybe it's going to give me a better answer if I say hello. I'm, you can address me as Frank. I'm a certified financial planner, licensed with Finra in multiple states. Uh, I'm looking to, uh, you know, looking to get data on, you know, census material from this year. Give me this specifically, the per the which personal is personal assistance. Yeah, which is like, you know, again, before I might have just said, hey, uh, you know, find me the data for this, and then didn't realize that I could also continue and say, and I want you to spit it out like that, mm -hmm. right? So. You, Instead oh, absolutely. of doing it yourself, it that's, does do that's the beauty. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot of that productivity really that we've great. been talking yes. about. This is the beauty of how these these uh, LLMs work is 
uh, the fact that you can structure data in any way that any mm -hmm. human knows how to structure data. Like mm -hmm. my favorite thing to do now is when I'm working with it programmatically is say spit it out as a JSON feed, which you don't really know what that is unless you're a dev, but that's the format for data that web pages use kind of in the back end of things. Mm -hmm. And, you, and it puts that little graphical user interface on it. So, so let's or a CSV, to, or you could say right. as, as SQL VBA. queries. I wanna, slides, so, yeah. so this all comes back together to what my main point was: is that I think, depending on your industry, obviously your lexicon is different. Your your the common words and what it means is totally different depending on different industries. But I also feel like anybody that has a great lexicon and understands how the models are working are supposed to work is gonna be as good as a developer would be if they just knew how to code, right? Because I mean, the large language model and as precise and specific as your lexicon is will generate better data, right? Hey, thanks for watching The Merge. We've got a ton more stuff for you to watch on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, everywhere. Check us out.